Okay, so um, a, the parabola, or you remember the graph of quadratic function based on what you did last semester looks like this. So it, it, the, the graph is a parabola that either opens down or it opens up. Okay? So the opens down or it opens up. So when you graph them, they'll look one of these. Now, remember when we talked about increasing, decreasing. The function goes from increasing to what? Decreasing. So this would be a max, maximum point. So one of the things you'd be asked as we go through this is what is that maximum point? What's the maximum value? And so on. And over here, this vertex, and also these are, uh, this is a vertex. And the vertex happens to be a maximum here. This vertex happens to be a minimum. All right, now remember a quadratic function has this form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, so most of what you did last semester in terms of factoring quadratics looked like this. You had an x squared, you had an x, and you had a constant. Now, you see this a right here, the coefficient of x squared? The coefficient of x squared tells you whether the graph is going to open down or open up. So if a is greater than zero, and when I say a is greater than zero, what kind of numbers am I talking about? Positive. So if a is greater than zero, meaning a is positive, the graph is going to open up, the parabola opens up. So just know what A is can tell you whether it opens up or down, and at some point it can tell you whether you have X intercepts or not. If A is less than zero, and when I say is A is less than zero, what kind of numbers are those? So if A is negative, the problem is going to open down. So in a quadratic function, um, A, B, and C can be any real number. There are real numbers except A cannot equal zero. A can never be zero. So notice, notice I never put an equal sign here. I never said A is greater than equal to zero. I never said A is less than equal to zero. I strictly said that A is greater than zero and a is less than zero, because a cannot equal zero. Because if a were zero, if a was zero, what's zero times x squared? It would not be a quadratic anymore. It would be what kind of function? A linear function. All right, b and c can be zero, but a can never be zero, because if it were, it would, it would be a linear function. Okay, now, um, there are, when you graph these, you'll be, you'll look in one of two different ways. You'll look in one of two different ways. Okay, so the first way, way it can look, the equation can look is this. F of x equal a times x minus h squared plus k. So sometimes the functions will look like this. Sometimes it's going to look like this. It's going to look like this. But it'll be one of those two. So when you ask to graph a quadratic function, either it's going to look like this, your function will look like this, or your function will look like this. Yes, that's a K. Yeah. But in both cases, notice you see an A, right? So A is in front of this parentheses here, and a is the coefficient of x squared here. But also keep in mind that you can see that this is quadratic because the x squared, you see that this is also quadratic. Because if you FOIL this out, won't you get an x squared? Okay. This right here is called standard form. So when it looks in the, like this, that's called standard form. Sometimes it's called vertex form. So some, some textbooks will call it vertex forms as well. And the reason it's called vertex form 
is because you can, from here, you can determine very easily what the vertex is. You cannot determine easily what the vertex is here. If it's in this form, you can determine the vertex right away. If it's in this form, you cannot. There's a formula you're going to have to use. But this form, we're going to call the general form. So this is standard form. This is general form. Another word for standard form is vertex form. All right, now the vertex, the vertex happens to be H, K. So whatever H is, that's the X coordinate of your vertex. Whatever K is, that's the Y coordinate of your vertex. Okay? So let's focus on this for right now, and then we'll, we'll focus on this for the second part. Okay, so number one, um, determine the vertex of each of the following. All right, so determine the vertex of each of the following. Also determine If the vertex is a max or min. All right. Okay, letter A. F of X equal two times X minus four squared plus Six. I'd write that down. So when you're graphing these quadratic functions, you first of all need to know what form this is. What form is this? Standard form, which in your mind you're thinking vertex. So from the word vertex, you should be able to tell me right away what the vertex is. What do you think the vertex is? Okay, four six. Now what confuses people is see the way we see that x minus four, so they want to say it's a negative four. It's not, because it's got to be of this form. See right here? X minus H, where H is your X coordinate. So you see right here, you see that X minus 4? So that 4 is your H. Not the negative 4, it's a 4. And then your K is this constant out here. I'm sorry, yeah, your K is your constant, so that's your Y coordinate. So what's the vertex? Four comma six. All right, so that's your vertex. Now, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum, and why do you think it is? Why do you think it's a maximum? What's positive? You gotta look at a, right? Okay, you gotta look at a. What kind of number is a? Positive. So since a is positive, the problem does what? Opens up. So in your mind, you're thinking this, right? So now tell me again, what do you think the vertex is? A minimum. The vertex is a minimum. So since A is positive, the problem opens up. So in your mind, this is what you should be seeing. So therefore, the vertex is a minimum point. Okay. All right, B. F of X equal uh, two thirds times X plus two squared plus five, let's say. What do you think the vertex is there? Two five, two, five. okay. Two, All right, someone says negative two. I never said that. Okay, so so you got to remember that that vertex form says x minus h, correct? Well, that's not x minus h. That's what? x plus 2. So in your mind, you're supposed to rewrite this based on what you learned last semester, semester before that. That x plus 2 means the same thing as saying x minus a what? Negative 2. That's what you're supposed to think of. Because remember, the vertex form does not say x plus h. It says what? X minus H. And 
that is not x minus 2. That's what? x plus 2. So you're supposed to think about the fact that x plus 2 means the same thing as x subtracting what? Negative 2. And this is your what? h. And then k is going to be this right here. So you got to remember the form. What does the form look like? The form looks like x minus h, not x plus h. Now, you might say, well, right here, it was already x minus, so did I have to rewrite this? Yeah, it was already x minus, so what I'm circling is your h. Here, that was not x minus, that was x plus, so you got to rethink this. Well, x plus 2 is x minus a negative 2, so negative 2 is your h. So what's the first one? Negative 2, 5. So you got to be careful with this. you got to think about what that form is. What is, what is it supposed to look like? All right, and uh, is the uh, vertex a minimum or maximum? Yeah, since since A is positive, the parabola opens up. So the vertex is a minimum. Remember, it opens up, so that's this, right? So that's, that's the minimum right here. So the vertex is a minimum. C, C, especially at this, f of x equal negative 4 times x plus 3 squared minus 6. So f of x equals negative 4. I keep using f of x. It could be g of x, h of x. It could be any function notation. Okay, what do you think the vertex is here? Negative 3, negative 6. Because remember, the, the uh, part that's in parentheses has to be x minus h. So x plus 3 is the same thing as saying x minus a negative 3. So negative 3 is your h. And this is your k. So the vertex is negative 3, negative 6. Does the problem open up or down? Yeah. So is vertex a maximum? So since it opens down, it looks like this. And the vertex is a maximum. Because A is negative, correct? So since A is less than zero, remember this is your A right here. That's your A. Since A is less than zero, the problem opens down. All right, the problem opens down. Um, and the vertex is a max. Okay. All right, now, D. F of X equals uh, negative 2X squared minus 4X plus 3. Negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, what form is this? Yeah, there's no way you can look at this right away and tell me what the vertex is. So, so there, the, there's, some, there's a vertex formula. There's a vertex formula. And the vertex formula comes from completing the square. So you, you would complete the square on this. Well, on the ax squared plus bx plus c, you would, you would complete the square on this part here, and you could re, and then it would be, it would be written like this. Okay. All right, but you're not going to complete the square. There's, we don't have time for that, so let me just tell you what the formula is. Now, I'm, I am going to put it on the video if you want to look at it. I haven't done that part yet, the, the completing the square of that yet. Um, but it's, you don't need to know what how it's derived. But it's there if you're just interested in it. But here's the formula for the vertex of a quadratic ring in general form. Let me go ahead and write it in this page. So um, f of x equal ax squared plus bx 
plus b. All right, so here's how you find the vertex. Okay. The vertex is a point, correct? All right. Now, um, just before I even do that, let me just remind you about something. If I have f of x equal 2x squared minus 3x plus 6, I want you to find f of negative 2. How would you determine that? Now, remember, remember, x is what here? No, 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 x is what here? Negative 2. So as a point, this is your x coordinate, correct? How would I find the y coordinate? Yeah, so basically this is this is going to be your y, correct? Mm -hmm. So if I know x, then I can find y by finding f of what? Negative 2. So where we see the x, I would plug in what? Negative 2. So I get 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2, right? And then order of operations, what's negative 2 squared? 4 times 2? So I get 8 and then a negative 3 times a negative 2. Plus six, so that's what fourteen. So, so my lot so f of negative two would equal fourteen, correct? All right, that idea is going to be similar here. Now, here's how you find the, the here's how you find h of your vertex if it's written in this form. So h is negative b over two a. It kind of looks familiar from your quadratic formula. Remember one. In your quadratic form, you had a negative b, and what did you have in the denominator? 2a. Okay. So, so if you remember what the quadratic formula looks like, then it's just that first term divided by the denominator. That, that's your x-coordinate. Now, once I find my x-coordinate, so this is my x-coordinate, correct? How do I find my y-coordinate of the vertex? You plug it in. So in other words, you, you're going to say, I need to find f of what? Negative b over 2a. Just like it did this. So, so negative 2, to find the y, I said f of what? Negative 2. So if my x coordinate is negative b over 2a, to find the y, I say f of what? Negative b over 2a. So that's your formula. That's your formula. All right, now it's very easy to use. Watch what you do. Now you don't have to memorize this, I'll give you the formula. So let's go to this now. So when it's written in general form, just like when when you solve this equation, when you solve the quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, didn't you determine what a, b, and c were? So that's the same thing. Find out what a, b, and c are. What is a here? Negative two. What's b? Right. So b remembers a coefficient of x. So that's negative four. And c is your constant. What's my constant? Three. All right, so let's find the vertex. So h would be negative b over 2a. So remember, that says I take the opposite of b. That's what that says. What is b here? So what's the opposite of negative 4? 4. Divided by 2 times a, what's a? So my numerator is 4, what's my denominator? So what's that? So my vertex has what x coordinate? Okay. So that's the x coordinate of my vertex. To find the y coordinate, I say f of what? Negative 1. I gotta find f of negative 1 here. And so remember what that means. That means I go to my function f, and wherever you see the variable, what do I plug in? Negative 1. So that means this, right? Agree? Mm -hmm. So I get negative 2 times in parentheses negative 1, but what do I need to do is negative 1 squared? Minus uh, four times negative one, and then plus three. Using the order of operations, what's negative one times itself? What's one times negative two? What's the negative four times negative one? Positive four plus three. What's the negative two plus four? And what is two plus three? So I found my vertex. What's my vertex? Negative one five. So that's your vertex. So when it's in general form, it's a little bit more work. You have to find it. You have to do. You have to use a vertex formula. But it's just a matter of you plugging numbers into a formula. The, this should not be difficult because because you you dealt with finding f of negative two, finding f of five, things like that. You dealt with plugging numbers into variables and, and simplifying it. 
Okay, now is this a, is the vertex a maximum or min? Why is it a maximum? Yeah, A is negative, so since, since um, A is negative, remember A here is, is negative 2, the parabola opens um, down, right? So it's, it opens down, looks like this. So that's good, that's a max. Okay, so the vertex is the maximum point. All right, let's do one more with the journal form. And then we're going to start looking at some graphs of these. Okay, E. All right, um, suppose that my function looks like this. I'm going to call it g of x for fun. g of x equals um, 3x squared minus 12x plus 1. Okay, we should find the vertex. What's the vertex form? How do you find the, the x-coordinate of your vertex? Okay. And before you do that, you may want to determine what A, B, and C are. What's A? Hey, what's B? And what's C? One. So this is, let's say, the opposite of B. So B is negative 12. What's the opposite of negative 12? So we're 2 times A. A is 3. That's 12 over 6, which is 2. So my vertex, the x-coordinate is 2. All right, now i got to find the y-coordinate. To find the y-coordinate, I'm going to say G of what? 2. So G of 2. So wherever we see the variable x, I'm going to plug in 2. So I get 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 1. So I'll agree with this part. Okay, what's 2 squared? What's 4 times 3? What's a negative 12 times 3? 1 plus 1. So what's a negative? What's a positive 12 and a negative 24? Okay, so negative 12 plus 1 is not 13. Negative 11, right? Negative 11. So you found your vertex. So the vertex is uh, 2, negative 11. All right. Okay, now, when you list the vertex, don't just say 2 comma negative 11. You're supposed to put what around those numbers? Parentheses. Okay, those are points. You're supposed to denote a point using parentheses. Now, on the worksheet you got back where you had to uh, list the domain of a finite set, some of you just listed the numbers. You're supposed to use set notation. So you're supposed to use braces, right? Some of you put 4, 5, and 6. Well, you're supposed to put that around in closing braces. So remember the, how, how notation is supposed to look with these things. So if it's a point, you've got to use parentheses. So don't just say 2, 11, negative 11. It's got to be in parentheses. All right, and does the uh, problem, uh, is, is the vertex a max or a minimum point? It's minimum. Since A is positive, since A is positive, the problem opens up. So you look like this. So it's a minimum, right? So since A is positive, the parabola opens up, so the vertex is a minimum point. All right, it's a minimum point. Okay, now we're going to start graphing these. Now, when we graph these, notice that the vertex were integers. The x and y coordinates were integers, correct? You notice that? Okay. Now, you, you know that, that you, you've plotted points before where, where these were fractions. For these, I'm going to make sure that the ver vertex, the vertices, or the, ver the vertex is, is they're integers, x and y are integers. So I, you shouldn't have anywhere where these are fractions right here. They should be integers. Okay, so let's, let's start looking how to graph this. Okay, now, 
Remember, in a previous lesson, we looked at a function that looked like this. And so this quadratic function, the question is, is this quadratic function an even, odd, or neither? It's even. That's an even function. This is an even function because it is symmetric about the what? The y-axis. So that was, I forgot when we talked about that, but it's in one of the lessons we discussed. So it's an even function because it is symmetric about the uh, y-axis. So if I take this piece here and fold it about the y-axis, I'll get this piece. You've got to be able to visualize that. This, fold it about the y-axis, you get that piece. We also saw this, that this distance here, this distance here is the same as what? That distance. That distance here is the same as what? That distance, and so on. Okay, so all these distances are going to be the same. Okay? So notice that since these distances are the same across, then, then this, this part of the graph is symmetric about the y-axis, and you get this part. So it's an even function since it's symmetric about the y-axis. All right, now if we have this, Is this function even, odd, or neither? It's neither. So it's neither. Now, when, when, when you use the word neither, all you're saying that it's not an even function and it's not a what? And not a function. That's, that's what you mean when you say neither. Okay? So it's neither even nor odd, nor an odd function. Now, remember, an odd function is symmetric about the what? No, 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 no. Now, no. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. If if you have a function that's symmetric about the about the uh, x-axis, you agree that's symmetric about the x-axis? Well, it's not a function, right? So we we're only talking about functions here. So a function is not not going to be symmetric about the the x-axis, right? Because it fails the what vertical line test. So. So if it's an odd function, it's symmetric about the what? The origin. Okay. An odd function is symmetric about the origin. So remember, it looks like something like this. This would be an odd function. And remember how we how we looked at this. Look at this point. Remember this point here. You're basically reflecting it about the origin. So you're going to take this point, look at this distance. Remember we drew a distance here, a straight uh, a segment going through the origin. That same distance we went across, and you get this point. So when I reflect this point over the origin, I get that point. If I reflect this point over the origin, I'll get that point. So basically, when you take all of these points and reflect about the origin, you're going to get what? These points. Okay, so we talked about distances through the origin when we did this. Now going back over here, we said that that's neither even nor odd. But does it still have symmetry? Yes, this function has symmetry. Where, where does it have symmetry? How do you know it has symmetry? What do you mean in that coordinate? I'd, I'd prefer that you tell me where this, where do you think the symmetry occurs? Okay, so she's using the minimum, which means that she's looking at the vertex, right? So if you look at the vertex right here, and if you draw a dotted line, going to a vertical dotted line, going to that vertex, and you take and you take this part of the graph reflected about that dotted line, that vertical dotted line, you'll get what? That. So this right here, this right here, that dotted line is called the axis of symmetry. So all quadratic functions, all quadratic functions have an axis of symmetry. 
that axis symmetry always goes through which point? The vertex. Even this even function has an axis of symmetry. You can tell me what the axis of symmetry is. What's the axis of symmetry here? No, no, not the origin. The axis of symmetry is the line, the vertical line. The y-axis. The y-axis is the axis of symmetry. The y-axis is the axis of symmetry. Because we talked about that. The graph is symmetrical about the what? The y-axis. So the y-axis is the axis of symmetry. Okay? Now, remember the axis of symmetry is what kind of line? What kind of line is axis of symmetry? A vertical line. It's a vertical line. So, so you got to remember now, so since it's a vertical line, you're going to be asked to determine what the axis of symmetry is. So in order to do that, you got to remember something about how, how do you label a vertical line. So in other words, in other words, if I give you this, what kind of line is this? What's the equation of this line? You gotta tell me. We learned we talked we talked about this last semester, the semester before that, and this semester. Uh, nope, you don't say four. You gotta give me an equation. Four is not an equation. Y equal four is a horizontal line. This is x equal four. And you better know that because look, it crosses which axis? The x axis. Y equals four is a horizontal line. It crosses which axis y equal 4? The y axis. So this is x equal 4. So that's the equation. So you got to remember how to name, how to, how to name a vertical line. A vertical line is named with what letter? X. There's no y in there. If there was an x and a y, it would be, it would have a slope that would be either going up or what? Going down. The slope would either be positive or it'd be negative. A horizontal line, how do you name of a horizontal line? Y equals. So this is, is my horizontal line here. How do you name that one? Y equal 2. Okay, so when we, when we name these axes of symmetry, you're going to be naming them with what letter? X. Okay? Now, just kind of reviewing again, suppose I give you this point here, this point here, and let's say that point is is 6, 5, and I draw this vertical line. What is the equation of this vertical line? X equals 6. X equals six. So, so the equation of vertical line is just your x coordinate, right? Because remember, vertical line, x is always going to be what here? 6, no matter what y is. Remember that t-table? x always equals 6. No matter what y is. So you name a vertical line saying x equals whatever this x coordinate is. Okay, so so in terms of in terms of the axis of symmetry, suppose I give you this problem. Now, in order to determine the axis of symmetry, what point must you know? The vertex. So let's say this vertex right here is 3, negative 5. You're going to be asked to determine what the axis of symmetry is. So you're going to say, so on the blank, you'll say x equal what? 3. So it's always, it's going to be x equal whatever your x coordinate is. And then when you graph it, you're going to, be, you're going to have to graph these things. Here, here I gave it to you. When you graph it, you're going to use the axis of symmetry to help you. You're always going to draw the axis of symmetry using a dotted line. So we're going to talk about that as we go through this. So you're going to name it, you're going to draw it as a dotted line. And so notice when you draw the parabola, you're going to make sure that it looks symmetrical. If, it's, if it doesn't look symmetrical, for some reason you do this, then you erase it and make it look symmetrical. It's got to be symmetrical about which axis? Axis of symmetry. Okay, now let's start looking at this now. Hmm. 
Okay, so graph each of the following. Okay, letter A. Suppose we're, we want to graph um, g of x, which equals um, x minus 2 squared minus, let's say, 4. Okay, so we're going to graph this. All right, what kind of form is this? Standard form or vertex form. So right away, you can tell me the vertex. What's the vertex? All right, so I'm going to go again. So just number one, part A. And I think I put the worksheet for that out. Um, I remember printing it. I think I put it out. Is anything over there for 3.1? Uh, okay. Okay, all right, it's fine. All right. Um, okay, part A is going to ask you to determine whether the problem opens up or down. So does, does the problem open up or down? Why do you think it opens down? You got to remember, remember it's got to look like this. G of x equal a times x minus a squared plus k. What part of this tells you whether it opens up or down? A. That number here tells you whether it opens up or down. What is that number right here? One. So that's that. So one is a positive number. So since 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 a equals one, which is positive, the parabola opens up. Okay. Now the next thing I should do is find the vertex. What's the vertex? There's no word there. You can tell me what it is. What is it? Two negative four. So the vertex is two negative four. Okay. Now, whenever you draw a quadratic function, no matter what it looks like, um, no matter what it looks like. Whenever you draw a quadratic function, it is always going to end up crossing the y-axis. You just notice here that sometimes will a quadratic function have x-intercepts? No, this one didn't, right? Did this quadratic function cross the x-axis? So does this quadratic function have any x-intercepts? But it does have what? I don't know. Which intercept does it have? What are, your, what are your intercepts? Your intercepts are either x or y. Y. So does it have a y-intercept? Yes. Eventually, it's going to do what? It's going to cross the y-axis. So the, I made a, the point I'm making is that you're always going to have which intercept? A y. You may, it may or may not have a y. An x. This is an example where it doesn't have an x. Does this have an x-intercept? Yes. So sometimes you will have x-intercepts, sometimes you will you will not, but you will always, in a quadratic function, have a what? A y-intercept. So the next thing you're going to do, they're going to ask you is, what is a y-intercept? Find the y-intercept. Well, you've dealt with that before when you dealt with linear functions. How do you find the y-intercept? Let x equal zero. You find the y-intercept when you let x equal zero because when the graph crosses the y-axis, what is x? Zero. <laughs> so I go to my function, wherever you see the variable x, what do I plug in? Zero. So remember g of x, same thing as y, right? So somebody said the y intercept is going to equal x, what's x? Minus 2 squared and then minus what? 4. What is 0 minus 2? So I'm going to square that, correct? What's negative 2 squared? And what's 4 minus 4? All right, so my y intercept 
is zero. So that's where it's going to cross the y-axis. Now the action rise in order is air. And as you rise in order of air, you have to put your x and y. What's x here? Remember, that's how we found it, right? And what's y? So 0, 0. Okay? All right. So the first three are easy. To find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. Plug 0 to x and simplify that expression. Okay, now D. Find the x-intercept. Find the x-intercept, you're going to let y equals 0. Huh? Okay. Let y equals 0. Now, this one is a little off because you'll notice that this is the origin, right? Well, you're, you're told that, that if you let y equals 0, correct? Well, here, you already, you already know what it is when y is 0. What's, when y is 0, what's x? 0. But it's not always going to look like this. It's just a fluke that this one did. So let's actually do the work. Because the next one's not going to be the origin. So to find the x-intercept, you let y equals 0. Now what stands for y here? G of x. So you're going to set this whole thing equal to y. Very good. So you're going to say, you're going to say x minus 2 squared minus 4 has to equal what? All right. Now on test 1, how'd you solve this equation? So, so in finding the the x-intercepts when it's in vertex form, you're going to eventually use the square root property. So first of all, though, you got to get that binomial squared by itself. So you got to add four to both sides. You agree? You get this. Then do what? You take the square root, but remember, you take the square root of both sides, what do I need? Plus or minus. And so the square root and the square root do each other, so what's left over here? Equals plus or minus what? Two. And then that's where you would split it apart because uh, the, there's no longer square root, so that means that this is a rational number. It's not irrational anymore. Remember we talked about irrational that first week of school with quadratic equations. So you're going to say x minus 2 equal a 2, and then x minus 2 equals a what? Negative 2, right? What now? Wait, what'd you say? What'd you say? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not at that point yet. I'm about to do that. So now you're going to add 2 to both sides, so you get x to be what? 4? Over here, you're going to add 2 to both sides, you get x to be what? 0. So, so how many x-intercepts do I have? 2. Y'all agree? Okay. So these are x-intercepts. So one of your x-intercepts is what? 4, and the other x-intercept is? Now that one you knew you had because of what? This. Okay. So the origin is both an x and a what? A y-intercept. All right, so those are x-intercepts. Now, if they ask you to write as an ordered pair, you're going to say x-intercepts in the blank. Remember, an ordered pair is a point, so you've got to put in parentheses and see the, the first. Four. Four comma zero. What's going to be the other? Zero, zero, which is the same as this one. Okay? So, so to find the x-intercept, you let y equals zero. So basically, you're going to take this function that's in vertex form. You're going to set it equal to zero, and you're eventually going to use the square root property. That was an equation you had in your first test. You have to use the square root property in your first test. And I don't know if I put it on the second test. It's on the study guide if I did. No, the week before. Okay, we discussed that in class last time. All right, E. Of 
Poor Jasmine, she's having a rough day. All right, E. Axes of symmetry. No, there's a lot of stuff you have to find. I don't know how many my math lab gave you. Yeah, and some of you waiting to the last minute to do some things too in my math lab. All right, axis symmetry. What do you think the axis symmetry is? What do you think? The axis symmetry. Yeah. Okay, what is it? What is the axis of symmetry? What is the axis of symmetry? Okay, so only one person, only one person even stated x equal. None of you did. Did you say x equal? Then you did not. Okay? Only one person said x equal. You're talking about a vertical line. You've got to tell me the equation of the vertical line. The equation of the vertical line is x equals something. All right, and so basically you look at your vertex. First of all, what was my vertex? Two, what is it? I'm, I have to look. Two, negative four, right? That was your vertex. So, so the axis of symmetry goes to the vertex. And it's a vertical line. So what's that x coordinate? Two. So it's this right here. So the axis of symmetry is x equal two. That's your axis of symmetry. Okay? Yeah. Let's graph. Now there's going to be a g and an h, but we're on f right now. Okay. All right. Okay. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the vertex first. What's the vertex? All right, so you can find the point two, negative four. Okay. Then you're going to do the next thing you know something about. What was the next thing you knew something about? Come on, guys. Look at your notes. The y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? Where does the graph cross the y-axis? Zero, zero. Right here. Then you knew something else. What else did you know? The x-intercepts, which one of them we already wrote. What's the other one? Four. Then you know something else. What else do you know? The axis symmetry. All right, so you're, you're going to do this. You're going to draw your axis symmetry. You're going to draw your axis symmetry using a dotted line. So draw a dotted line. Do the axis symmetry. Okay. Okay, now you're going to be asked to, to make sure that you label five points or you plot five points. How many points do I have on, on this graph so far? Three. All right. I need two more. Okay. So all you got to do is just is just to give me another x value that's to the right of the axis symmetry. Three. I would use the one next to it. So x is three. If x is 3, now remember my function was uh, g of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 4. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if x is 3, if x is 3, I got to plug in 3 into x. So I get y equals 3 minus 2 squared minus 4. What's 3 minus 2? Okay, what's 1 squared minus 4? Right, negative 3. Y'all agree? So I've got the point 3, negative 3, which is here. Now remember, how many points do I need? Five. I need five so you can draw a better graph. 
don't use the three that we had. I need an, an, I need two more. Okay, now listen, use symmetry to find the other one. Because look, right here. You see how you just found this point? Well, that point is one unit from the axis of symmetry. So you go the other way one unit. So that is going to be another point on the graph. Because remember we talked about earlier where uh, these points are symmetrical about the axis of symmetry? Those distances, when we talked about distances, it was right here. We said these distances all have to be what? The same. That distance is the same as that distance. That distance is the same as that distance. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, so if you... So basically what's going to happen, though, is that, that uh, um, you're going to have a y-intercept. There's only one y-intercept. You're always going to have just one. Once you know your y-intercept, use the idea of symmetry to find the other points, and that will give you your five. In here, though, the, uh, the y-intercept was also an x-intercept. So you have your five, right? Okay, now make it look symmetrical. So do the best you can with graphing this, but it's got to look symmetrical. Use your axis symmetry to help you. Something like that. It could have been a little bit better. Now, some students, they're lazy, and they'll just do this. Look. They'll do this, and then draw something straight up. Does it go straight up? No, you better not do it straight up. Because if you do straight up and down, it's no longer a function. It fails a vertical line test. It's got to be a curve. It's got to look like a parabola, right? And then do this. Make it look symmetrical. Make this side look symmetrical to that side. All right, so something like that. And there's your graph. That's all you do. Do the best you can with graphing this. Now, one thing, though, if, if you do something like this, let me just show you. I'm wasting a graph here, but graph paper here. But if you do this, let's say this, this right here was your vertex. And this was axis of symmetry right here. And you do this. Am I going to be happy? No, in fact, I'm going to take off all the points on my graph. Because does that look symmetrical? Oh, you're telling me that that is hard to make this, to, to, to not, to erase this and make it look symmetrical. Okay? So, so if you leave it like this, it either tells you one or two things. You do not know anything about symmetry. That tells me that. Or it just means that, hey, I'm just going to draw anything I want and I don't care. Got to look symmetrical. You make sure it's, a, it's more of a curve and not a V. These are curves here. Don't draw segments. Don't draw segments. Make it look like a curve. All right, so that's the graph. Remember to graph it, we found the vertex. We found the y-intercept. The y-intercept is easy to find. The vertex is easy to find. The axis of symmetry is easy to find. The only hard one you have to deal with, because you have to remember something from, from the first test, was how to find the x-intercepts, because it requires you use what? The square root property. And some of you had issues with the square root property in the test one. So hopefully you corrected that by now. So everything, everything on test one you still use throughout this course. You got to make sure you you went back and you looked over test one. All right. Now here's the other thing. Part G. Part G. Find the domain and range. Domain and range. Okay, you have your graph, right? You have your graph, right? And 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 there are going to be some problems where it's going to say, without graphing, find the domain and range. But the graph is given, so let's use the graph for right now. Remember, the domain is the set of x coordinates, and you and you use your ruler to go along which axis the x-axis. Now remember this arrow means it keeps on going like this, correct? Okay. So so if I'm at if I'm let, let's say this point right here is negative one million. When x is negative one million, am I going to point the graph? 
Yes, so from negative infinity all the way to what? Positive infinity. So the question is this. For domain, regardless of whether the parabola goes up or goes down, what is always going to be the domain? Negative infinity, infinity. All real numbers. Negative infinity, infinity will always be the domain. So, so that part here will always be, now this is for quadratics, will always be negative infinity to infinity. The range, though, is not because, because you have either a low point or a what? High point. So remember the range, you go along which axis? The y axis, and I'll start touching the point, I'll start touching the graph rather here, right? What is that y coordinate? Very good. All the way to what? Very good. So your graph, or, I mean your range is going to be bracket negative 4 to infinity. That's your range. Okay? So you use your, to do that, remember all you did was use your, your vertex and whether it went up or down. All right. Now, H. H. Yes, it's uh, it's quite a bit of work for this one. So the videos, there's like seven videos, and they're, they're long because it takes. No, knows how long it took to do each one. All right, H. But but this part you you already knew about from a previous lesson, how to find domain and range from a graph. The same thing for the next one. The next one is where is f of x increasing, decreasing. So where is the function increasing, decreasing? Remember, f x is your y, right? Okay, so you read a graph from left to right. So after it's left to right, what are these y values doing? And all of a sudden, they're increasing. So remember, when we did the increasing, decreasing, you, you used the, uh, the domain. So you look at your x-axis. So from negative infinity to x equal what? Not negative 4. Two, right? You gotta use your x axis, your domain. So from negative infinity to x equal two, what is your graph doing? Decreasing. And then from two to infinity, what's your graph doing? Increasing. So remember, remember we did the, the color uh, lines to do increasing, decreasing. All right. So it's increasing from. Oh, and remember for increasing, decreasing, it's always open intervals. So parentheses. To infinity and decreasing from negative infinity to two. Say it again. Because it's it's just uh, where's the increase? It's increasing up to two. Um, we're not talking about domain here. Domain is is where is is where you look at does um, is is this x coordinate part of my domain? Is this x coordinate going to be a part of the graph? When we talk about domain, and the answer is yes, it would be. But for interval, for increase and decreasing, we're just talking about open intervals. All right. Uh, okay. Listen to this. Um, does f of x and uh, this is g of x? Does g of x have a max or minimum point. Does does g of x have a max or a minimum point? Come on, guys. You know your graph. What's a graph? It's a minimum point, right? It's a minimum point. Your vertex is a minimum point. Okay, so then it's going to say. It's going to say, uh, what is the minimum value and where does it occur? And when you say where does it occur, they're talking about that. That's what. Okay. So the minimum, the minimum value occurs when x is what? 2. You agree? Because that point right here, isn't that point two, uh, negative four? Mm. Yes or no? Okay, so the minimum value occurs when x is what? Two. What is that 
that what is the uh, minimum value when that 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 question asks you the y value? So negative four. So so the minimum value is negative four, and the current value is what? Two. All right. So that's that part. All right. We're going to do another one like this. Yes. Five minutes. Take a break in five minutes. <laughs>